We've got a lot of questions on chat GPT, actually, John. So uh, I, I'm going to pick one of them to tap into that, that field. <laughs> what is your view of artificial intelligence's role in the future of mental health therapy? I think we're going to have to discover it together, right? This is not, I don't think, I think anyone that tells you they're an expert on it or has figured it out, I would not believe them. I think, again, we're all seeing what it does. We're all probably testing it. We're all curious. But I do think one of the analogies I like that I read somewhere was it's kind of like Wikipedia right now, right? It, Wikipedia did not, it was useful, but right? it helped put information. You could access it. You could look stuff up. There's a risk of misinformation. Someone could put wrong information on Wikipedia, but generally it made information more accessible for people. They could understand things and it was a positive thing. It didn't, of course, again, change how you'd want to manage your illness per se, right? It just made it more accessible and you, you could understand it. So I wonder if in some ways it, it'll be a great thing because we can all, again, have information more accessible in the format we want. I don't know if it's really going to become a therapist that quickly because the hardest type of conversations are therapeutic conversations, right? You have to understand the context, the person in front of you, the alliance, the illness. And so I think it's one thing if a chatbot can kind of have a very superficial conversation with you, but can it really kind of have a deeper one? Uh, if anything, I think that will be the last thing that kind of it gets to. So it's, I don't think anyone is listening as if they're a peer support specialist, you're not going to lose your job to this. Have yeah. no fear. 